This lesson is all about indices. You may have heard indices referred to as powers or exponents. And you can recognise them by the superscript small number raised to the right. So here's a number which is written in index form or power form. It has a base of 4 and an index of 5. And what this means when we write it out in extended form is 4 multiplied by itself so that we've got 5 4s. Now just be careful here, it's not 5 multiplications. Notice that there are only 4 multiplication symbols. And we can work this out using multiplication. 4 to the power of 1 is 4. 4 to the power of 2 means 4 times 4, so that's 16. 4 to the power of 3 means 4 times 4 times 4, which is 64. 4 to the power of 4, 4 times 4 times 4 times 4, which is 256. And 4 to the power of 5, 4 times 4 times 4 times 4 times 4, is 1000. And 24. So you notice the terminology here, it's 4 to the power of 5. If the power is 2, we have a special name for that, it's 6 squared. And it still means 6 times 6, which is 36. And if the power is 3, we say that it's cubing the number. So this is 8 cubed, which is 8 times 8 times 8. Now I know that 8 times 8 is 64, so this is 64 times 8, which is 512. Now what I'd like you to do is, for each of these three examples, write the expression in extended form, which is sometimes called expanded form, and also work out the value of the expression. In extended form, 3 to the power of 4 is 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27, times 3 is 81. 4 cubed means 4 to the power of 3, so that's 4 times 4 times 4. 4 times 4 is 16, multiply that by 4 is 64. And 6 to the power of 1, that is just 6. We're now going to have a look at zero and negative exponents. I'm using a base of 3, but you could follow this procedure with any base of your choice. In the previous examples, we saw that 3 to the power of 4 is 81. So 3 to the power of 5 is 81 multiplied by 3, which is 243. 3 to the power of 3 is 3 times 3 times 3, which is 27. 3 squared is 9, 3 to the power of 1 is 3. Now let's have a look at what's happening as we reduce the power by 1. To get from 243 to 81, we need to divide by 3. To get from 81 to 27, we divide by 3. From 27 to 9, we divide by 3. From 9 to 3, we divide by 3. So just as when we increase the value of the power by 1, we are multiplying by the base each time. So each time we move up, we're multiplying by 3. When we move down, when we reduce the power by 1, we divide by 3. So 3 to the power of 0 is 3 divided by 3, which is 1. Many people see this power of 0 and think that 3 to the power of 0 must be 0, but it's actually 1 following this pattern. And if we continue dividing by 3 each time, 1 divided by 3 is 1 third. And if you're struggling to think why that is, imagine you have a pizza divided between 3 people, each person gets a third of a pizza. Divide by 3 again, so we'll divide each of those thirds into 3. Now we have a ninth. Keep dividing by 3. Each ninth is divided 
into 3. Now we have a 27. And hopefully you can see that there's a connection between the positive and negative indices. 3 to the power of 1 is 3. 3 to the power of negative 1 is 1 third. 3 squared is 9. 3 to the power of negative 2 is a ninth. 3 cubed is 27. 3 to the power of negative 3, 1 over 27. So 3 to the power of 4 is 81. 3 to the power of negative 4 is 1 over 81. This now brings us to the index laws as they are known. The first one here is that a to the power of 0 is 1. Any number a raised to the power of 0 is always 1. And the second index law here is that if we raise a number to a power of negative m, then this is the same as 1 over a to the power of m. And these laws are true for any value of a except when a equals 0. So why don't you get your calculator, try raising any number to the power of 0 to check that it is 1, and try raising any number to a negative power to check that it's the same as 1 over that number to, a, to the positive power, and also try a equals 0 to see what your calculator says when you try to input these expressions. So a couple of examples here, 8 to the power of 0, using this index law, anything to the power of 0 is always 1. And secondly, 7 to the power of negative 3, so a is 7, m is 3, this is 1 over 7 to the power of 3, and to work out 7 to the power of 3, 7 times 7 is 49 and 49 times 7 is 343 so this is 1 over 343 and notice that a negative power does not result in a negative number it means it's a fraction but it's not a negative fraction we're going to see some more index laws in action as we work through the next four examples. Firstly, what happens when we multiply two numbers with the same base and different indices? So 6 cubed is 6 times 6 times 6, and we're multiplying that by 6 to the power of 4, which is 6 times 6 times 6 times 6. Now notice the question is not asking us to work this out, the question is asking us to simplify, leaving the answer in index form. So 6 times 6 times 6 times 6 times 6 times 6 times 6 is 6 to the power of 7. So when we multiply two numbers with the same base, we can add the powers. Secondly, we have two numbers with the same base, but this time we're dividing what's going to happen to the powers. If I think of division as inverse multiplication, what I'm asking here is, what do I need to multiply 8 squared by to get a to the power of 6? So if you think about it this way, 8 squared times 8, that's 8 cubed. 8 squared times 8 squared is 8 to the power of 4. 8 squared times 8 cubed is 8 to the power of 5 and 8 squared multiplied by 8 to the power of 4 is 8 to the power of 6. So 8 to the power of 6 divided by 8 squared is 8 to the power of 4. And the index law here is that if you're dividing numbers with the same base, you can subtract the powers. Now in number 3, 5 times 3 to the power of 4, Obviously, we could write this as 15 to the power of 4. But really what we're getting at here is how can we rewrite this in a different way, expanding the brackets. Well, 5 times 3 to the power of 4 means 5 times 3 
times 5 times 3 times 5 times 3 times 5 times 3. And if we group the 5s and group the 3s, this is the same as 5 to the power of 4 multiplied by 3 to the power of 4. So you can see that we can expand the brackets if we're multiplying two numbers to a power, then we can write them separately raised to that power and multiply them together. And finally, 7 cubed to the power of 4 means 7 cubed times 7 cubed times 7 cubed times 7 cubed. And if I write all of those out, this is 7 to the power of 12. If we raise a number to a power and raise the result to another power, then it's the same as the base and multiply the powers together. So as index laws, we can say this first one is a to the power of m multiplied by a to the power of n is a to the power of m plus n and a to the power of m divided by a to the power of m, which could also be written as a to the power of m over a to the power of m. And this is the same as a to the power of m take m. Thirdly, we've got two different bases. So this is like a, b to the power of m. And this is the same as a to the power of m multiplied by b to the power of m. Finally, we've got a to the power of m all raised to the power of n, which is a to the power of m, n. In conclusion, here's a summary of the index laws. The first law is about multiplying numbers with the same base. The second is dividing with the same base. Then we've got raising a base to a power and then to another power. Anything to the power of zero is one and a number raised to a negative power is one over the same base raised to the positive power. And here we have some algebraic examples of each.